we can see how we can focus and actually attract not only our soulmates and soul matches, but our future business partners and actually creating a future career for ourselves that is more harmonious to who we really are. We can also see how we can use the field to attract our spiritual teachers. We want to find teachers that resonate with where we want to go in our spirituality, regardless of our religion. But also, how we can use the field to create a dialogue with the universe itself. So, whether we're an architect, an astronomer, a biologist, a medical doctor, a musician, an artist, or even a student, by creating this dialogue with the super intelligent levels of the field, and expanding our consciousness into the ultimately into the nine levels of the cosmos, the nine levels of the angelic, and the nine levels of the field, we can get the answers to anything we can imagine. The cure for AIDS, the, the cure for you know, biofuels, the next biofuels. We can find the secrets to nuclear fusion. We can find the secrets to unlimited zero-point energy. We can find the secrets to the next song, the next generation of music. All of that information is available to us in this field if we can tap into it. We can even begin to formulate a dialogue to awaken our own inner genius and true potential. One of the ways that we can access entering a more quantum, broader field range of awareness, a more expansive state of awareness, is to begin to encourage ourselves to see things not so much in terms of concepts and ideas, but more in terms of pure energy itself. So that you begin to perceive what is normally, you would label it and you'd say, wow, that's a rose or that's a car or that's a tree. You would just begin to teach yourself, guide yourself into feeling the pure energy of that experience as though you were in a state of innocent wonder. And then, and so what this does is that it frees your whole cortical field it's like you, just because you detach yourself from looking at the world in terms of ideas doesn't mean you lose that, those ideas. What it does is it helps you to free your informational field up so that now when you encourage yourself to go into really deep states of peaceful, peaceful, quiet, core being relaxation quiet, when you learn to penetrate to the very core essence of the quantum field itself, what you start to feel is an incredible harmonic peacefulness. So we have a meditation which encourages you to enter into that state of pure, unattached to ideas, pure energy awareness, complete, peaceful, brilliant stillness. And as you enter that, what we now know from studies of, of uh, creative genius, that it's often exactly when we're in the most relaxed, most sort of open-minded spaces, that we begin our brain process, because it's now free, it's suddenly like the electrical circuitry is no longer confined to our old thought spaces. So that our cortex can suddenly flash up with something like akin to a super light. Like the light of our awareness within our awareness field can suddenly flash into our whole brain field in a much more core contextual way and we start to holographically insight instead of think. We start to get picture images. We start to see potential solutions that are way more holographic. For a description of the difference between holographing and thinking, if you were to think of, a, a, say, a round basketball, and if you were to take a one diameter slice of that basketball in, a t in an attempt to understand a whole field of information, what you would end up with is with two polarized opposites. You would have like an either or, or a right or a left position, or a good or a bad position. And you'd have an argument, because you've polarized the informational field. And you tend to look at that informational field in terms of being somewhere along that band. 
I'm in the center, I'm on the right, I'm on the left. Whereas when we insight, if you could picture that same ball, guess how many diameters there are inside of a whole field of information? There's an infinite number of diameters that you can put through a whole field. So the difference between thinking and insighting is when you let the core of that circle of information, which is your brain field, you allow the energy to expand in every direction simultaneously from the core to the boundaries. You get an instantaneous flash of insight. You get a hologram. Suddenly you see solutions in terms of a huge, like, wow. And this is exactly how Einstein incited the theory of relativity. It came to him in an instant. It took him two years to try to explain what he saw in that instant through conventional linear sequential logics. So what we're talking about is teaching people, opening people to a new level of awareness in which they begin to support their intelligence field to jump into quantum field holographic as opposed to thinking. If we awaken to the idea that the universe itself is intelligent, could we create a dialogue with it? What is the universal language? How can we learn to listen to the cosmic conversation? Many scientific studies at top universities around the world have confirmed that consciousness can affect the structure of water. Water has been demonstrated to have memory in numerous studies that our thoughts and feelings can be recorded by water. As water is made of two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen, we can deduct that hydrogen has memory. Our bodies are made of nearly 90% water, trace minerals, and oxygen. Our sun is also made of the same stuff we are made of. 91% hydrogen, helium, trace oxygen, and trace minerals. Hydrogen was created less than a hundred seconds after the Big Bang, the creation of the universe, and established itself as the most abundant element in the entire universe. The massive spiral arms of the Milky Way galaxy is hundreds of billions of stars and planets are made mostly of hydrogen. 75% of the visible mass of our galaxy is made of hydrogen. While hydrogen has memory, could our galaxy's spiral arms, the sun, and the billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy actually hold all of the cosmic memories of its entire history? Could this be where the great Akashic records archiving all of human history are held? What if we could create a dialogue with this enormous memory system? We could know the answer to any question and solve any problem or any limitation. The language that uh, the spiritual people, and spiritual people meaning that uh, the medicine people, the, uh, the different uh, religious groups within the, tr the Zuni tribe, when they go into a religious uh, uh, communication system, they talk about the origins of who they are talking to. In a lot of cases, especially in the medicine world, is that they're talking about the, the star, star people and all the other related uh, priests, they call them priesthood. In one, for example, in one section of the, the uh, prayer system, there's a specific line or a phrase or a group of, uh, within a prayer that talks strictly about the night beings and in the upper world uh, priesthood, they call it. It's, that's the only one that is re referenced as a male and female entity and uh, the star, uh, the sky people, the, the night people priesthood and 
the finish line in that is that they, they only appear instantaneously. That's, uh, that's one, one line in the, the prayer system. There are so many, so many different uh, uh, parts to the prayer system depending on the specialty of that particular medicine group. Is there a language of the universe, a language if uttered with perfection, the secret forces of the universe could be activated? When we examine some of the most ancient languages in the history of the world, such as ancient Hebrew, the Vedas, Aramaic, and the Native American Indian dialects,